because they had served with many Asian troops, um, Chinese, Filipinos, Vietnamese, uh, and uh, even the Japanese uh, home defense forces, I had some experience with uh, Asian troops. And when I got to Laos and met the Hmong, I was very much impressed. They were extremely hardworking, loyal, and honest. And those were traits that you didn't often find in many of the troops I'd worked with in the past. So I was initially very much impressed with them. And I was impressed the way they uh, were able to fight the communists. In fact, the North Vietnamese Army was a very well-trained and disciplined organization. And the Hmong did extremely well as guerrilla fighters. But when they were forced to fight against regular North Vietnamese Army with artillery, they, uh, they were badly beaten. And uh, as you may know, that 20% uh, of the Hmong male population was killed in the 15-year war. And by the time of 1972, 1973, and the worst time of the war, boys of 10 and 12 years old were on the front lines. There are a lot of the Hmong people die during that time. Uh, he, based on his ex experience during that time, he expects about like 20 plus thousand uh, Hmong die, in including children, uh, parents, women, because during the war they are fighting right in the village, uh, not, uh, not somewhere else, but right in the village where people uh, leave. As a child growing up in, in refugee camps, many of us didn't know any better. But from the stories that I heard, uh, yes, it was, it was very difficult. Uh, it was very difficult to, to get food. Uh, it was very difficult to live in that state of hopelessness where many were not sure as to what the future will be like. Uh, psychologically, um, they, they feared of, of being, um, uh, of being uh, basically, uh, they feared that they would be returned back to, to Laos and that uh, they would end up facing or, or end up being persecuted by, by the Laotian government. So many were very uncertain of, of their futures. The refugee camp, it's just like a prison uh, with a fire, uh, wire fence around. Uh, and then uh, we live in the, in the refugee camp. I live in the refugee camp. I consider myself grow up in the refugee camp because I start to remember things when I was in the refugee camp. Uh, for 13 years, three refugee camp. Uh, when one closed, transfer to the other one. Uh, when that one closed, then we'll go to the next one. And then to the third one, my, my dad decided that um, there's no way that we can go back to Laos. Uh, let's go to a, a third country. Uh, I remember at one point, my dad decided that let's go to French. Uh, but uh, later on, uh, he decided that no, uh, let's go to America uh, because uh, he know that uh, he was involved uh, with, with the American during the Vietnam War. So uh, let's go to America. Uh, and, and in 1987, uh, my dad decided to go to America and we got a church from Oshkosh sponsor the family, so we came to Ashkash. The Hmong, we were taught that the word Hmong means, means free, so um, part of that is more independent-wise, and not only that, um, to the, the free will to do, I, to do anything that is possible. So coming to America, a lot of the families felt that that was freedom-wise and the land of free. So they did that and a lot of land of opportunity. So we, we've done that. And a lot of the Hmong community also, um, they are able to embrace that idea and actually to keep going with the idea to help and grow themselves and become entrepreneurs or um, various things in um, the community and be able to help out in the community. The Hmong are such a fascinating group of people. We have lived a very, very storied life. We've lived thousands of years on this earth to very little people's knowledge. But we are continuing to define our roles in this new society. 
we are trying to become good community members. We're trying to contribute to the people who are around us. We are continuing to educate others about who we are. At the same time, educate ourselves on who we are. And we're changing the demographic of a lot of American societies. Being Hmong, going to school here in America, one of my biggest motivations for uh, graduating high school, going to college, graduating from college, and getting a job was because where my parents came from. They always told us stories of how much they wanted to go to school, but they couldn't. No funding, one, and two, there were not as many schools around. That was the first thing my dad told me he wanted was to have his kids go to school and receive higher education and get a career. And that was my biggest motivation for going is because it's something that other people really, really want, but they can't have. No matter how much they want it, they can't have it. But here in America, it's, it's really a country of opportunity. It's there. It's laying around. You just got to go and pick it up. <laughs> Every culture needs to learn about themselves. Where did they come from? What are their values? What are their belief? And again, in my daily profession, I see that our young people, the monk people, are really losing it because it, it really is not the dominant culture. We all know the dominant American culture, which is a great culture and embraces all the, the uh, layers of the salad. And therefore, sometimes when you're so good at changing, you lose bits and pieces and holes of yourself. And that's what I'm seeing with among youngsters right now is they're really losing the things that are, are considered Hmong, including the language. Generations, they change. And I do see some kids that are saying that, oh, you know, we live in American society now. We don't need that old stuff. But at the same time, I'm kind of, I'm not going to judge because it's like, if that's how you think, then I guess that's who you are. You know, but I'm going to keep the culture going because I still want it to be there. I am very proud to be Hmong. Um, and I was very, very lucky uh, to be Hmong. Uh, I know that the Hmong is one of the ethnic group that uh, we don't have a country, but we have a land. Uh, that we live, uh, wherever we live, uh, we work hard and we do everything we can to contribute to, to the community that we live in. Um, and um, the Hmong are a group that, um, I, I almost say that Hmong are never lie to their friend. Uh, the reason I say that because I, I raised in a very traditional Hmong family and uh, I live with the Hmong family, the Hmong community for all my life and I know that the Hmong are very serious to what they do. And they are very uh, hard worker, they're very friendly. Uh, Hmong are generally very nice and friendly. Uh, if you be nice and friendly to them, they'll be very nice and respect you very much. So um, I'm very proud to be Hmong. Um, and uh, I will do everything I can uh, to help the community and help everyone. I feel very proud to be Hmong. I think there are struggles in life that um, individuals do face, but in, um, growing up there were some kind of discriminations going on in the community, but um, I've been very, very fortunate being able to work with different members of the community and even classmates that um, are, were willing to accept and kind of share the Hmong community or the Hmong culture or traditions with them. So I've been very fortunate with that, um, regardless of what religion it was. Um, everyone's very, very accepting to that. So I think just more awareness going out there, that's very good. Um, not only that, I feel very fortunate that um, I was given this position to be in as a Hmong woman, because I feel that that's something that I was able to um, be able to grow in that way, to face all these difficulties, and not only that, to see all the challenges or what I can see to help the Hmong community. So I feel that I'm that, um, pretty proud to be Hmong. I think sooner or later, every one of us, every child of an immigrant 
and that includes all of us in America. We'll have to come to terms with who we are. And we are not just Americans. None of us are just Americans. We're German Americans, Polish Americans, and we are Hmong Americans. And that is something to be proud of.